Hey, how's it going? We are in Proverbs chapter 22, verses 7 through 10 today. And let's see what we got. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. He who sows wickedness reaps trouble, and the rod of his fury will be destroyed. A generous man will himself be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. Drive out a mocker, and out goes strife. Quarrels and insults are ended. All right. Boy, we got a bunch of interesting stuff there. First one's just a blunt truth, not necessarily how it's supposed to be, but the way that it is. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're putting yourself in a good situation financially because if you don't have any financial leverage, you're just in a world of hurt. You know, I mean, it's a rough one. Um, understand what borrowing does, you know. There's smart debt, of course, you know, but there's really bad debt also that's going to put you in a really bad spot. So you want to be smart. Make sure that you're um, living your financial life in a responsible way. So there you go. Verse 8, he who sows wickedness reaps trouble and the rod of his fury will be destroyed. Violence and strife is going to come back on you. You know, eventually it comes back on you. Doesn't work out well. Live by the sword, die by the sword, that sort of a thing. He who sows wickedness reaps trouble, and the rod of his fury will be destroyed. You can see the rod of his fury really indicating the wickedness is violence, you know, that sort of a thing. So I think in our culture, we tend to think of everything as sexual sin. A lot of times in the scriptures, if it's a generalization, it's talking about violence, you know, because there was a lot of violence back then. Not good. So, um... You know, I think we take that for granted. I mean, thou shalt not murder was there because there was a whole lot of people murdering each other. So there you go. Violence is going to come back on you. Then verse 9 is like the opposite. A generous man will himself be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. So kindness and generosity is also going to return to you. You know, the whole idea of reciprocity. If somebody is cruel to you, you naturally want to be cruel to them. Now, we want to override that as believers in Jesus and not return evil for evil, but return good for whatever it is that we get. Um, you know, that's a big challenge, but the natural inclination is to return evil for evil. And then when somebody is particularly kind to you, you want to be kind back to them. You want to help them out. So that's just the natural way that things work. Um, so kindness and generosity is going to come back on you as well. You know, so there you go. And then verse 10 I think every pastor should have to repeat this to themselves in the mirror every day. Proverbs 22.10 Drive out the mocker and out goes strife. Quarrels and insults are ended. So what does this mean? It means that if you are careful to make sure that only the right people are involved, then you're not going to have a whole bunch of problems. So drive out the mocker, you know, Make sure that you don't give room for that. Um, you know, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you pitchforks and torches and stuff. But, like, don't give room for it. Uh, our annual business meeting, annual celebration uh, just happened. And the we don't have an airing of the grievances section of our annual business meeting like some churches do. Like, just open the floor for anybody to gripe about whatever they want. Like, we're not doing that, you know? Like, why would you give space for that? We're not, we don't give space for that. There is no room for that. So that's that whole drive out the mocker and out goes strife, quarrels and insults are ended. So what's a mocker? I think this is important in our, our culture. You know, like, I don't know that we use that term very often. So I'm going to give you my personal definition of mocker. This is mocker in my personal definition. It is someone who is disrespectful to their adversaries or someone who is disrespectful to someone they disagree with. So it's a person who is disrespectful to their adversaries or disrespectful to someone they disagree with. Um, that's a problem. If we can't disagree respectfully, if we can't have 
uh, civilized disagreements, then we're in a big, big, bad place. And of course, society right now is just full of, uh, I mean, mockery from that definition is, is an American value. <laughs> like, uh, it's something celebrated to disrespect your adversaries, disrespect people who disagree with you. And that's just not good. That's not what we want. That's not healthy. It's not good stuff. So let's pray. Let's pray to not be mockers. You know, Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. So what we want to do is not conform to the pattern. And the pattern is mockery. It's disrespecting your adversaries or those that you disagree with. And we don't want to be that. What we want to be is respectful people, um, even being respectful to those that we disagree with. So let's pray along those lines. Heavenly Father, help us to grab hold of your truth um, and let us not be people who are prone to disrespecting those that we disagree with, those that we find ourselves on opposite sides of issues with. Lord, let us not be that person. We don't want to be the mockers. So, Lord, I pray that you would guide us in this. You would give us wisdom so that we can be uh, respectful to others and show who you are through our behavior. So, Lord, guide us in this, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.